for safety. Hello, this is uh, Tim in truck 6601. I need the location of my uh, truck to um, get my property out of there. Let me transfer you. Well, first Who are you transferred me to? Can I call you who can help with us because I have no information about the truck? How do you how do you not have any information about the truck? I'm sorry. The number you dialed cannot be reached from your calling area. Thank you for calling. Goodbye. Tim in the building. What's up? How are you? I'm doing all right, man. I'm doing all right. Beautiful Thursday morning coming through uh, Mississippi right now. About to head back up to uh, to Ohio and uh, get ready for my doctor's appointment over the weekend. So yeah, man, what's what's uh, what's, what's good with you, man? Oh man, oh man. I uh, I was uh, guessing a previous driver at a uh, Super Ego, and uh, I was in Geisinger Hospital in Wilkesburg, Pennsylvania, expecting a newborn baby, right? And I told my dispatcher, I said, hey, I'm going to be off for like a few days because my wife is, you know, going through a big, you know, C-section, you know, procedure. So I can't really go anywhere. I can't even take a load. So then after the third day, I come outside, my truck's gone. I'm like, well, what the fuck? So I uh, I called the police. The police said, uh, well, we'll talk to security. And security looked into it. And they said the truck was repossessed. I'm like, what? I never missed a payment. You know, because they take super ego, take $700 a week out of your check. It's always paid for. You know what I mean? So then I I uh, try to call them and they're, you know, nobody's answering the phone. I called about 20 different people. And now it gets to the point where, well, I'll we'll have my colleague help you. We'll have this guy call you. We'll have this person call you. I said, well, I have a report in through the Pennsylvania State Police. Because my truck has my dad's dog tags, and he's a U.S. Navy veteran, and they have his ashes in there, which is another thing that's kind of immoral and upsetting because, you know, stuff like that's, like, irreplaceable. You know what I mean? I could see, you know, I could see, hey, we'll put your stuff somewhere in a safe location, or we'll mail it out to you. You know, they, they won't even talk to me over the phone. I called 20 different people. They know I'm calling. Like, I could feel, like, smiles over the phone, like something's funny. And I said, hey, where's truck 6601 so I can retrieve my property from the from the truck? They won't give me the location of the truck. They keep hanging up on me as soon as I call. Now they recognize the number. They won't even speak, and they'll transfer me. So I really, I don't even know what to do at this point. You know, I called Elmhurst Police in Illinois. They said they can't do anything unless the report's in. I said, the report's in through the Pennsylvania State Police. So I'm just like, well, I've been through a lot of companies. And people, unfortunately, people, super ego gives the, okay, you're an owner-operator. You can make you can make your own money. You know what I mean? You can dispatch your own loads. You can't do none of that stuff. They give you some fake load board app that says a price on it. Then you have to call your dispatch. You don't, you, you can't make money as an owner operator. If you want to be an owner operator, you're better off going to a dealership, you know, putting a down payment on a truck, get your own authority, all everything else, all, all what you need, you know, get a trailer and start booking your own freight. That's how you do it. You never go to these lease to rent, rent to own, because let me tell you, they're crooks, 100%. And I, I'm going to have to spend my own money and drive out there because I can't get in contact with anybody there. I called Floyd Inc. I called, I probably called, well, we'll call you back ignoring the situation where I even contacted ABC7 News and they're going to reach out to Floyd and they're going to reach out to Super Ego. I mean, I've worked for a lot of trucking companies and I don't think I was ever screwed this bad. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like drivers get, you know, we get the shit end of the stick a lot, a lot of these companies. You know, they'll tell you, to, oh, yeah, come to the yard. And then all of a sudden, they bring you in the office and you're fired. So then you got to, like, scramble for, you know, a credit card or a ride home or a U-Haul truck. Like, I've known guys that took U-Haul truck, rental pickup trucks home just to get the hell out of there, you know. It's just a disaster of a story. And they just, I would have thought, because I, you know, I ran for them since September, 
you know, they'll run you good, but you can't make money there because I noticed, like, I had a positive check. I made about $5,000, and they took out every random deductions, like bobtail insurance from November, ELD payment from four months ago, and whatever you make positive, they skim off the top. So I only took home about 800 bucks out of 5000 So I was like, what the hell? I just can't get over the fact that they won't give me the information about my truck, where it is, where I get my belongings. It's just unethical. You know what I mean? It's not good business at all, you know? Especially when you inform your dispatcher. I can't even get a hold of my previous fleet manager or dispatcher. He refused. He won't even answer his phone. Nobody in the office will answer their phone for me because they write notes on your And it's like, well, I say, okay, where's truck 6601? They go, I don't know anything. I don't know where it is. I said, so you can't track 180,000? Oh, come on. Like you can even have the police there. I just need my property out of the out of the truck. That's all. My dad's ashes and his dog tag are both irreplaceable. I even called the United States Navy because he was a veteran, you know? Things like like if I had like old clothes in there or something that's not worth like a sentimental value to me, because last year he passed away of pancreatic cancer and really tore up the family here. So like it's like another thing that's, you know, weighs on your mind. You know what I mean? And, you know, from trucker to trucker, I mean, this, what they did isn't right. And they broadcast like they're a great company. You know, you could make tons of money. You could rent, you could own your own truck and you could be an owner operator and you're self dispatch. You know, they, they, they give you a dream that you're going to be, you'll have freedom on the road. I mean, any driver who goes there, I, I suggest they run away from these. Chicago-based lease-to-rent companies are just financial ripoff. You want to make money in the truck industry, you go to Diamond Truck Sales down in Houston, Texas, and you get a truck. Buy a truck, get your MC number, everything you need, get a trailer, and start trying to find customers and book your own freight and do the official owner-operator that way. Never lease a truck, ever. Now, Tim, let me start by saying I'm truly sorry for what happened to you stuff like that is irreplaceable very sentimental and i'm and i I don't even understand why the company is not is not taking this to heart the only thing you asking is just for your stuff back right now your truck is in limbo and they claim that they don't know where is it at they they should know where is it at it should be tracked right but uh, yeah they have gps in it what i want to bring in that you feel highly for going to do leasing the right way. But why did you chose to do leasing their way in the first place? I chose at the situ- at the time time of being, like I chose to, you know, I've been to I've been a company driver for a while. Like for, you know, I've been a company driver for five years. I've been in every state in the country, I ran all eight states. And there I I you're still technically a company driver, but you don't feel like it as much, but you still can't, you know, book your own freight. And my the thing is with Super Ego, they'll take any driver. Like my motor vehicle record isn't the best. So I needed a company that I could just run with, make some money. And September of last year, and I didn't really make shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Even And I was living on the road. Like I had everything... I was there for months. I never even I never even came home. You know, I even had my family with me on the road. She was my girlfriend, my wife, girlfriend, whatever, was with me pregnant on the road until she had the baby. You know what I mean? So we lived in the truck for a few months now until we got our own house. All right, so let's start this off, man. Your wife is in the hospital having your first your first baby. This this your firstborn? This is my second. She's a girl. Okay. Okay. Well, congratulations yeah. on that. Thank you. You drove to the hospital in the truck, parked the truck. Yep. Spent time with your, the spend time with your wife for the birth of your daughter, only to come back yeah. outside in the parking lot to notice that the truck is missing. Yes. So you did the thing, called the police. Maybe you parked in a in a in a spot that they probably told it. 
something like that. Confirmed that the, because I even confirmed in the hospital, asked, I spoke to security, and I asked them if I could park my bobtail on the on this parking lot up here, in the north end of the lot. And they said, yes, you're you're perfectly fine. You're you're able to per- park there without a problem. So I was in a, a a location. So they told whoever to come pick up the truck. You would think either the driver or somebody would have some sympathy that the truck is parked at a hospital. Notify the guard. The guard at the, at the desk say, hey, we're taking a truck. Can you get his stuff out instead of just coming to take it? I don't know. I don't know if this world has any sympathy or cares about anybody anymore. They super ego doesn't care. Like they they don't give a shit. They they are like the devil in my eyes because they don't find sympathy for anything. When 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 somebody makes a decent amount of money and they get to a level where they're just immoral humans, I mean they don't. I don't know. I, it's it's just not right. Well, it's it's awfully funny that they was able to send somebody to go and pick up the truck. Now that they got a hold of the truck, now they can't find the truck. But <laughs> they was able to find the truck for somebody to go and pick it up, though, right? They know where it is. It's a $180,000 truck. They know where the truck is. It has a built-in GPS. Even if you unplug even if you unplug the ELD in that truck, which another thing is when you, when you unplug the ELD in the truck, they could still track the truck. They could still see it's moving. So you finally get on with somebody at Super Eagle to find out that the truck was reacquired by them. Did they tell you why that they came back to take they, the truck? They never gave me a reason why they came to take the truck because I texted my fleet manager. Like at once I was, you know, once I was in the hospital, I said, yes, I'll be ready. As soon as my baby is born, Monday, I'll be ready for a load. He didn't even respond to me. So I believe they had a plan as soon as I parked that truck to come take it. I informed him. His name is Simon Johnson. And I informed him that I was taking time off. I literally informed him a week in advance. Like, I'm on top of, like, being informative. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. So at this point, you wasn't up under no thoughts of doing any wrongdoing on your part. They even know that they had plans to reacquire the truck right no yeah not at all you you was paying for the truck every every week you didn't give no yeah, type of out of your loads you didn't give no type of indication that you was you was quitting or you was upset or anything like that at the time you just told them no. hey i needed to be with my family here at the hospital yada 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 i'm having a baby you would think that they would be happy for you and be like okay well here, spend time with your baby, uh, with your family, enjoy your newborn, and then get back with us uh, where everything settles down and you get back with us when you get ready to get back in the truck. None none, none of that happened. None of that. Yeah, you would think that. You would think that. Nope, they took it. We got to get this truck running. We got to make money. It's money, money, money. You know, the root of all evil. Wow. So you, So you tried everything. You called the Illinois police. I know you said that they told you there wasn't nothing that they can do, but what was the actual they conversation? Said, the conversation I said, I said, uh, well, just to get the ball rolling, I said, I need a welfare check on my dispatcher. He hasn't answered me all day. And they, they went over to make contact, you know, with my dispatcher. And they said, my dispatcher is in another country. So I'm, so I'm, I'm being dispatched from somebody that is from another country, so they have they 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 have people who run the country and it run the company in a different country, and then some are on visa, are in, in Illinois in Elmhurst. I was like, what? and he's like, he does he was confused. He's like, we have calls about them all the time. They don't even know how they're still in business, and they're a police department, right? A local police department in the area. That's been called out there multiple times, and they're afraid someone's gonna like shoot the place up. Like that's how bad they treat the drivers there. I mean, a disaster. Yeah, I, I hear so many horror stories. Even one young lady uh, that came on the show to shout out to her because it was because of her that I was able to get in contact with you. Uh, she came on the show and informed us that 
the drivers that's coming back to quit or coming back to return the trucks, they're not able to come back and return the trucks at the actual yard. They get routed to a lot that they need to drop the trucks off at <laughs> because they, they don't want no smoke from the disgruntled drivers that get there. Basically, what they're doing is you can't play with a driver's money out here. Like, we're out here on the road for weeks at a time. Like, they have abandoned trucks all over the U.S. I mean, how do you run a successful operation if your trucks are abandoned? Drivers, a driver is happy when he's paid. He gets to go home when he wants to go home. You know what I mean? When you're paid on the road, you get a good check. You know, you call the wife up, say, hey, I got a good check. I'm ready to come home now. All right, everything's good. You go out to eat, you go to dinner, you have a good time. You, you got to be able to make money while you're on the road dealing with traffic every single day, especially if you're out for three weeks at a time. You know what I mean? That That is stressful, you know, especially if you're not making money and your dispatchers aren't giving you enough load, you're sitting around too much. It's like, it all bottles up into one. And Yeah, and I even posted on the Facebook group and see if anybody's seen the truck. It sounds as though before this incident that had happened to you, it sounds as though you was pretty contempt with the company for the most part all the way up until that happened to you right so far i was content with them for a while like i, I really didn't i i liked my dispatcher you know what i mean I, they were giving me decent loads you know for a little while i had to find out the trick to how to make a positive check it wasn't a lot of money it was like maybe 500 bucks 800 the most sometimes only a thousand but it was just enough to to make ends meet to get you know, what I needed, you know, back home and with, you know, to live with my girlfriend and my, my son and newborn daughter. It was, it's basically enough. It was just enough to get by. Like I was pretty content with my dispatch until they just did this to me. This is what cut it. You know what I mean? I was like, okay, well, my truck's at 80 miles an hour on the pedal and cruise. I'm fine with everything else. The thing is with your log books, you never take a, you have an ELD log. So if you're under undergoing a DOT inspection and the officer's literally right next to you, they'll fix your logs to the point where it's a legal log so you won't get a ticket, which is a huge crime, but you know, it also helps you further, you know, further the load and go farther. But sometimes it would be nice to actually take an actual ten hour break and go to sleep, you know. Ooh. So your father, may he rest in peace, he, he just recently passed this or uh, last year, this year? Last year, yeah. All right, and you say he was a service veteran, so thank you very much for his for his service, yeah, man. He's a U.S. U.S. Navy veteran, the U.S. Navy veteran. The Daw Tads definitely are sentimental value. The In ashes, the, truck. the ashes of your father, very very much sentimental value. Somebody came, took the truck without your knowledge. They didn't even bother to give you a call. They to give me a call. There's names on there. Like, I even had medication, like a bottle of medication in that truck. My medical card is in the truck, in, in the drawer. Like, you would think somebody would have some sympathy. Hey, call, let me call this driver and say, hey, I, do you want to come get your stuff or just something like that? No, whoever took it is heartless, too. Either heartless or they're just confused because they're just doing what the company told them to do. You know what I mean? But if I was to ever recover a truck, I'm different. I would, you know, I would actually, if I was at, you know, if the truck was at a hospital, what happens if there was like a, if the driver came there for like a medical emergency and I'm taking his shit, you know what I mean? Like, you don't know what's, what, you know, other people are going on in their life. You know, you should take the time to think, you know, and like, Hey, do the right thing. I, I've never had this happen to me. You know, I've, I've been screwed over for a lot, for a couple of companies and not like this, you know? Wow. So you all over the phone right now to to find out where this truck at so you can at least get your property back. Today is, what, yeah. Thursday. When was the truck taken? The truck was taken on February 3rd, and I've been calling nonstop ever since. And, I, and they just will not answer the phone for me, and it'll start beeping. They will. They refuse to make contact with me, and they'll just hang up on me. They won't even answer my call. I called Floyd Inc. Why do you think that? I don't know. I really don't know. Sat, that was like, it's almost a week. Thursday, today's the 8th. The 8th. I don't know why Saturday I can't get a hold of anybody. 
Saturday was the third. That's five days. All day until five o'clock Eastern Standard Time. I can't get a hold of anybody. That's ridiculous. Even after hours. The after hours number's blocked. You, you mean, I, I can understand maybe Saturday and Sunday. Well, no, I can't even understand that because you can still get a hold of somebody on the weekend. And I'm sure somebody yep. had to give that person authorization to go and take the truck. So there was somebody there. Text messages. Yeah, yeah. I have text messages from an asset department or they told me when I was on the road, they would give me locations of trucks all over the United States that I was in, where was that? Groom tech. I was in Texas and they told me to go look into someone's backyard for a truck that was stolen. I said, I'm not going into anyone's backyard. So I get shot in Texas. You know what I mean? I'm not going on. I'll drive by to see if the truck's over there, and I'll give you a call, but I'm not going on anyone's property. I They have look, they have a recovery team in, in a location of every single truck, because I have actual proof that they know where trucks are. It last pinged at this location. I have all the text messages from, it would be something named Peter from the recovery department said, we, can you go and pick up something, or can you go do this? They have locations of trucks. But it, I, it's just hard now because I can't get in contact with anyone. And I've called for the last five days. They know the number. They won't answer the phone. They know who's calling. They won't answer the phone. Or they'll transfer me. They'll do the, I'm avoiding the problem. Let me transfer it into a number that doesn't exist. Oh, or my colleague will call you back. Or this or that or that. Like, come on. Like, I'm going to have to rent a car and drive over there and try to get answers myself. So where are you at right now? To do that, I'm home. I'm in the Grants in Pennsylvania, so I'd have to drive 10 hours all the way to Chicago, Illinois, and it's a journey when you first start with Super Ego as well. So if you don't have your own money, screw. They they won't put you in a hotel, nothing. Like they won't do anything for you. So if your orientation lasts a little bit longer than it's supposed to, you'll either be sleeping outside, or if you have some money in your pocket, you could stay at a hotel. If you paid for it yourself. So you have to pay for all your expenses yourself to get there. When I first got there, I slept outside in the rental car because I just had enough money to get there. You know what I mean? And you, you just can't make enough money to financially, you know, provide for yourself there. And they give, as soon as I got there, another red flag because they said, oh, we'll give you, we'll give you a thousand bucks if you go recover this truck. And I said, no, I want to, I'd rather a truck on your lot. <laughs> you know what I mean? They don't give you the thousand dollars. They take it out of your first settlement. So right off the rip, but, with all the dreams that these guys is selling you, come to us, make some money, become your own boss. Your first settlements will be looking good, but we'll put you in a in a good running truck that would that would make you some money. Only to come there to find out that hey, we need you to go and recover somebody else's truck. They they already fibbing to you. You get told that you will be put in a in a in a in a like new truck, but yet they want you to go and recover somebody. So they selling you a dream, a farce, by saying, "Hey, we'll put you in a brand new truck." But hey, how about this? We'll give you a grand if you go and recover somebody else's truck, and you can take that garbage truck that somebody else has had. That's that's yeah. crazy. That's crazy as hell. We don't know what, you know, oh, yeah, you know, hey, do you want to go recover a truck? I said, we'll give you a thousand bucks, and then they'll tell you, and then they'll tell you, well, if we don't have this truck available, if you have down payment, if you have five grand to put down another truck, I said, you got, you got to be an idiot if you're going to give a company $5,000 to put down on a lease to purchase company. <laughs> You want to give $5,000 down to a dealership. You want to give them the down payment on a Freightliner Cascadia or a nice Peterbilt. That's who you give a down payment to, not at least to own company. They're out of their mind. They pocket that 5000 That's for sure. You know? So, Tim, when are you going to make the pilgrimage down there to at least hope that the truck is at the lot so you can get in there and get your stuff? I can hope and pray, you know? Probably in the next few weeks, I'm going to head out there 
because I'm helping my mom. I'm fixing up the house where I live. And in the next few weeks, I'm going to head out there and see if it's there because I can't get a hold of nobody. It's just stressful, you know, very aggravating, upsetting. And you, you basically feel helpless because nobody can help you at all. Well, Tim, yeah, very, I, very traumatic, man. What, what what they got and not giving back to you is something that you hold dear to your heart, very sentimental, you, something that you can't get back. It's hopefully, a controversial company, Super Eagle, do the right thing by you and and they'll have the stuff at the office. I don't understand why would somebody else would keep that. I don't, I don't, I don't get know. it. Probably that driver was probably yeah. incentivized to go and get your truck. Maybe he was incentivized that thousand dollars to go and recover your truck without even knowing right. the basis of it. So he goes right. snatch up your truck, and now he's probably driving it. So you don't even know if he probably took it, cleaned it out without understanding some of the significance that's in the truck. So you can only exactly. again, you can only hope and pray, hope, hope and pray, pray that that. The driver at least did the right thing by packing up your stuff, taking it back to the shop, leave it there, say this is from truck number 6601. So when that driver comes back, he'll be able to get all of his belongings. So Yeah. It's the right thing to do. It's only the right thing to do. Like, how can you even drive the truck with all this personal stuff in here? And I'm from Pennsylvania. It has, you know, my address on it. Like, I had stuff in there that had my address on it. I, I was literally 20 miles up the road. 10 miles, to be, to be honest with you. Why not go into the hospital? Hey, I'm taking a truck. What happens if the driver was having a medical emergency and he's at a hospital? You know, why does anybody think outside the box? See, I had my wife call on the phone, Floyd Inc., and they hung up. So let's do it again. This is we'll go to go to show how dirty they are. Thank you for calling Floyd Inc. Incorporated. Your call is important to us, and we want to assist you quickly. We'll listen to how they treat you. And the Pennsylvania State Police told me it was a felony to drive cross state lines with ashes slash human remains in a tractor trailer. So I have you know basically probable cause to file a lawsuit about this. And I'm not letting this go because my dad was a Navy veteran and I'm hoping that somebody from the Navy or somebody that is a veteran is disgruntled enough to, you know, make a scene or make a stink about what they did. You know, I'll even call them now again. This is, this will be day, this will be day six. All right, I'm listening. This will be day six. And this is safety recalling? The safety. Hello, this is uh, Tim in truck 6601. I need the location of my uh, truck to uh, get my property out of there. Let me transfer you to Culture Extension. Who are you transferred me to? Can I call you who can help you with that because I have no information about the truck? How do you how do you not have any information about the truck? I'm sorry. The number you dialed cannot be reached from your calling area. Thank you for calling. Yeah. Goodbye. See, what that means is they transferred me wow. to another house. Wait a minute. Wait Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You you actually called. This is safety here, right? Yep. Here. Yep. And you mean to tell me you could not go on the computer and pull up truck number such and such to know where the truck is at? Yep. They know where that damn truck is. And, They're and, playing with me. And for her to turn around and be like, oh, I got to transfer you to somebody. And that's transfer and, and transfer you to a phone number that's not even oh, wow, not even bro. Insane, right? Bro, so that's crazy. That's how bad it is. And you say, and this you is know? and and this is your sits. Well, you say day sits. So this is your sits time calling the company. Yeah, you should see my call log. You should see it. It's insane. I'll even call again. I'll try claim. Thank you for calling Floyd Inc. Incorporated. Thank you for calling. Claim. Let's see this. Let's see this now. This call is being recorded. Please hold for the next available agent. 
Hello, this is a driver of a truck 6601. I need the location of that truck so I can get my belongings out of it. Just try and give your case manager a call and see if they can help you out if you really have any faith as far as that goes. So you don't have any information either. I tried to call him, Henry. He doesn't answer the phone. He never yeah. called me back. I called for the last six days. No one has any information on a $180,000 truck. It just grows legs and drive down the street like a Tesla. All right, if you want, I can uh, try and send him a message. and. Uh, they know, did that yesterday. Back Nobody called me back. Who else could I speak with regarding this matter? Honestly, I'm not sure. It would have to be the fleet, I think. Can I speak to somebody in recovery? Sure. Do you need their extension? What's their extension? It's uh, 3000 And what's the, what's the number so I can call for the extension? can try uh, 630 All right, I'm 1514? Yeah. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to call that because I called for the last six days and nobody's helped me. So let me try to call that. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you, sir. This is what they do. They just keep giving me phone numbers to call. I've called probably about <clears throat> 100 different phone numbers. I'll try this with extension 3000. This call is being recorded. Hello. Uh, sir, this is Deontay with Recovery. How, How you doing? This is uh, Tim. I'm a driver of 6601. I need the location of that truck so I can retrieve my property out of it. Just a second. Just a second. Oh, sorry, sir. Can you just repeat uh, what you just told me? I need the location of truck 6601 to get my property out of the truck. Okay, okay, let me see. Are they still there? Hello? I don't know. Hello? No, no. I I could have I could have sworn that wasn't a that wasn't a click, was it? Hello? Hello. This call is being recorded. See they transferred me again. That's what they do. They Hello, this is Tim, driver of truck six six oh one. I need a location of uh, truck six six oh one to get my property out of it. Hello? Yeah. Give me one moment, please. Yeah, give me give me one moment, please, just to check, okay? Okay. Okay, I want to transfer a call, okay? To who? I get... I'm sorry. The number you dialed cannot be reached from your calling area. Thank you for calling. Goodbye. There you go. Okay, 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 okay. Wait, wait, wait. Let, let me just see if I can just wrap my, hand, my head around of what just happened. So we're looking for a truck number, a whole truck. A whole yeah. semi truck. We're looking yeah. for a truck number six six zero one. Let let me just preference. Yeah. Let me just preference this for a second. I work for a company, a small company out of Ohio, and the owner yeah. and the owner there knows exactly where his trucks are at. I can tell you right oh. now, he knows that I am driving on I-55 as we speak. He can pull up the truck number. He can pull up the Google Maps. He can pull up the sky the camera and zoom down on the truck as I am moving. He knows where his truck is at. You're in a ditch. Of he course. knows about it. You're, you're parked on the side of the road. He knows about it. My company, if you're parked on the side of the road on the shoulder, my company within minutes will call me up and be like, hey, lockout, you okay? Everything's yeah, yeah. all right? <laughs> we we see yeah. you on I-55 heading south or heading north, and you're at mile marker such and such. Yeah, GPS and you're is you're on the side uh, of you're good. on the side of the road. Good, you're good, on the good. right, you're on the side of the road. We just want to make sure you're all right. You mean to tell me yeah. that a whole company, like controversial company, Super Eagle, with multiple people in there, you mean to tell me from safety to claims to recovery to dispatch Nobody, nobody can pop in number six six zero one and tell you where the truck is at. Biggest BS I've ever heard in my entire life. Wow, wow! Like I, I, I wouldn't have never yeah. believed it if I didn't hear it with my own ears, bro. 
That's exactly why I did it. Because you got a lot of naysayers out there that that loves oh, controversial yeah. company Super Ego, and they they are quick to come into into the comment session saying, "Oh man, he's capping. No, nah, they don't do that. No, nah, yep. he didn't call the right people. Oh no, nah, he didn't do that." But you you called safety. I called everybody. You called safety. Yep. We heard it. Young lady try try to transfer you to somebody else to a number that wasn't that was connectable. You call claims, they transfer you to somebody else, but then we get disconnected. You call, or no, you get the information from them for recovery. You call recovery, we got clicked, we got connected to a dispatcher. No, Nobody knows where truck number 6601 is at. They, they don't nope. know who's driving it. They don't know where the truck is parked at for this young man to come and get his his father's ashes and dog tags yep are you serious and they, heard of. and and they want and and some of these black op companies wonder why drivers pop their lids exactly why drivers crash the trucks to the to the front door <laughs> why trucks are all over the united states we don't know. We don't know. Here you are. You're not even. You're not even worried about the truck. You just say, "Hey, I'm. I just want to come and get my stuff." That's, That's all. It. Can they at least tell you? Okay, I tell you what. Don't tell me where truck number six six zero one is. I, I I don't need to know. I I just need to know where to come to get my stuff. Can you tell me that? I can try that. I'll even try that. Try try that. Try that. See I'll if, try that right now. See, it's been five days or six days. I'll, I'll try that. And I noticed they're blocking a lot of my phone numbers now. Sorry, the number you dialed cannot be reached from your calling area. Oh, my God. I'm sorry, the number you dialed cannot be Wow. Thank you for calling Floyd Bank Incorporated. Your call is important to us and we want to assist you quickly. This will try safety. To speak with dispatch press one. For accounting press two. For safety press. Thank you for calling safety. This call is being recorded. Please hold for the next available agent. Hey, how you doing? I need to know where I can get my belongings. Where I can pick up my belongings. That was in truck 6601. I called for the last probably a hundred times and I keep getting transferred and no one knows where the truck is. Nobody knows how to help me. Kind of What's your phone number? 6601. Uh -huh. This call is being recorded. Here we go again. Please hold while I try to connect you. Your call has been forwarded to the voicemail for Desans Dodgenovic. No one is available to take your call. Well, there you go again. This is frustrating. It's oh, not yeah. even, it's, it's, it's not even it's not even involving me, but I, I, I feel your pain, bro. This this is frustrating. This this really is. I have never had this problem in my life. You know what I mean? I can even try to call claims again. They This This is not cool, bro. Thank you for calling claims. And anyone this who call is being recorded. likes this company is selling you when you agree that you basically can't live. Hello, I I'm calling about to retrieve my property from truck 6601. Man, you know who I'm speaking with, first of all? First name is, last name is... Did you say uh, the truck number? The truck number is 6601. 6601, let me check through our system. Could you briefly explain to me what was happened? The truck was stolen from Wolfsburg, Pennsylvania. Oh, stolen? Yeah. From, from you? You're the driver? I'm the previous driver. Somebody else is driving it. And the company will not tell me where it is and where I can pick up my stuff. Correct. Okay. Okay. Listen, Tim. Tim. Yeah. Listen. Tell them at this point, it's not even about the truck no more. It's about my life saving equipment. What did you say? Tell them at this point it's not even about the truck anymore. Tell them it's about your life-saving equipment. Okay. Thank you for your patience on that. So basically, I cannot find anything regarding the location of that truck currently. I just don't. I don't need the truck. I need. I need. I need to know where my property is. 
you got a claims department. I'm not sure who gave you this number since we are handling our car accidents and cargo issues, okay? So that's not up to us, but I definitely can leave a note to your fleet manager or your previous fleet manager, and they can they can call you back just to... to who is the driver? That. When you pull up that number, who is the driver of that truck? I can see only Timothy Scott Salesman, not the current one. Reported a story of truck it's stolen. No, it's uh, my... Tr- it's my property in the truck. It's my life-saving property in the truck. What should be the good contact phone number? Okay. I will have them a note right now, and somebody will give you a call shortly. And they That's said that? That I can assist you right now. They you said know? that for the last six days, and no one has with, gotten a hold of me. Uh, with whom you spoke? Everybody. I spoke to safety, Every- dispatch, recovery, claims. Who's, I, I just don't understand. No one knows anything about, you know, this matter. I will have some answers for you. I mean, you got a claims department, so we are not, as I said, we're not handling this kind of things, but I will, I can Who is them. handling okay. these kind of things? I don't know. To be on your feet. Feet, I suppose. A stupid paranoid for them, and for the, definitely. Rest assured, have a nice one, sir. So the rush, it is, wow. as you can tell, it, very frustrating because nobody knows. No one oh, knows. That's 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 crazy. We we have a multi billion dollar company over here, and, they, and they can't work. and and they can't find truck number six six zero one, so that you can get your property back. I I know you said that you want to wait a couple of weeks, but I I, I don't know, Tim. I I feel that you shouldn't wait. I I think you should be in the car tomorrow and be there first thing Monday morning, man. Because yeah, I'm, I'm I, not really. I'm not playing anymore with this. I because I gotta put whatever I'm doing at this house on hold because yeah, I, I yeah. What this I can help. this telephone runaround is, is ridiculous. Is ridiculous, and I I I think it's warranted of a, of a personal visit somebody gonna have to oh, yeah somebody gonna have to stand there face to face with you and tell you what's going on i hate for you to go there and put your foot down but you you I might have no just choice. have to do that hey i'm i'm not leaving until i get my stuff back i have no choice you can haul me out with the police yeah, or oh yeah, yeah, or or even let the police know that you're on your way there. Give them a heads up and be like, "Hey, officer, such and such, I'm on my way to controversial company Super Ego. They have my property, and they're refusing to give it back to me." Yep, and that's what I'm gonna do. I have no choice. I I I think that's what what you probably might have to do, Tim. Yeah, just go so. there, just non-violently. Or just go there. And just calm, cool, and collected, and just let them know, hey, I'm here to get my property back. And what's important to me, which is my father's ashes and my father's dog tags. Everything else on the truck is is irrelevant at this point. But my father's ashes and my father's dog tags is very sentimental. And make sure you... You you point that out and let them know, hey, I'm going to be here every day until I get my stuff back. Of course. The only way I got to do it. That's that's I'm the sure. only that's the only way that I think they can see that you're serious because this oh, yeah. this this they telephone, this girl. telephone tagging and this telephone runaround is 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 frustrating. I I, I called yeah. this person. They transferring me to this person. This person right here don't know what's going on. I, I can't tell you what's going on. But yet you can pull up the number, though, and you see what's going on. Then you refusing to tell me what's going on. You can tell of that. Course. You can hear it. You can hear it. Uh, what's what's the truck number, sir? 6601. Hold on. 6601. Oh, okay. Boom. Something is on the computer. It's telling them what's going on, but yet they're refusing to tell you what's going on. Now, I understand for amnesty reasons that you might not tell them who's driving the truck, but you can't tell me 
uh, if you guys got the truck, you can't. He sounds so surprised. Oh, it was stolen? Well, no, well, no I, I wouldn't say stolen. I would just say that you guys came and, and, and recovered the truck for an unknown reason. That y'all not even telling him what was the reason why the truck was recovered in the first place. Is yep. it do? Is it due because of non-payment? Is it due because of a, I, I'm I'm have I, I took time out to to have a baby? I'm at the hospital. I could be laying up in my deathbed right now. You send somebody to the hospital to come and get the truck without even coming in there to let the hospital people know that hey, I'm here with a controversial company, Super Ego. And I'm here to take the truck. Uh, I just want to let the driver know. Not not even that type yeah. of courtesy. You would think that. And I said that before. You would think I could have been, you know, who knows? The driver, I would have, the driver's at the hospital. Oh, what's going on? Maybe he's, you know, in a medical emergency. Let me go in and speak to somebody. Let them know that they, the company told me to recover the truck. If you want to get some, if you can have the security get some of his belongings out. Then I'll take it. Or at least let the at least let the hospital security take some of the belongings out. At, at least, least let the at least something. let the hospital security knows to go up to your room and say, "Hey, driver, uh, they here to recover the truck or whatever, whatever. You want us to get some things out of there for you? At least and bring it up to and then they would do that too. You know what I mean? They would bring it up, bring it up to the hospital. You know what I mean? Hey, if they came to take your truck, I would have been fine with that. You know, but it's going to take a personal visit for me to get that information. And I'm hoping that whoever had it didn't throw everything on the side of the road somewhere and call it a day. So that's another class action lawsuit that they're going to have to suffer for. Well, Tim, I I right now would would get the ball rolling. I would I would try to get a lawyer involved with this. I would get a car. I would take the pilgrimage up to uh, up to Chicago, Illinois. I would make myself a permanent fissure there until <laughs> until I get my uh, my property back. I'm, I'm gonna. I, I, I would I, I would do that. I'm and I'm talking for me that that's what I would do if I was in this situation. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to pray for you, my guy. I'm, I'm definitely going to put you in my prayers, man. And Again, I am so sorry that that this terrible tragedy is happening to you. It shouldn't happen yeah. to you. It it should it should be somebody come and get the truck, recover the truck, whatever the case. And it should be no problem for you to come up to the office and get your property back. It shouldn't be right. no way that nobody is telling you that this truck is in the dark. Like they they don't know where this truck is at. I work for many a companies that knows where they trucks are at. I couldn't move that truck over five barrels an hour. I'd be saying, oh, well, it looks like you're driving in the opposite, in the wrong direction here. Driver, what's going on? You know what I mean? Like, people know where their equipment is going. Like, if I owned a company and I hired drivers, I would love to know where my truck is at at all times. The driver pulls over on the shoulder. Maybe something's wrong. Maybe he's, like, having a heart attack. If the truck's sitting at the truck stop so long, is he all right? Let's check out. You know what I mean? Like things like that. You want to know where your equipment is at all times because your equipment and your drivers is what is what's, you know, keeping your trucking company in business. And I don't think they even care because they have tons of LLCs. Like when you go there, because Super Ego is a broker, they have all these other companies running under them. You go in there, there's Floyd, Hadar, Tri-Time, Jordan. Ohio State Police is not a fan of Jordan Holden. They stopped them at the toll plaza because if you don't have, the thing is, you, you need to have your own money to pay for tolls. And they don't put pre passes in any of their trucks. So they'll call a state trooper, and the state police said, This company's terrible. You know, I had I had a spill in Ohio before. It was, I forget where it was, but not too far from Hubbard. It was like right outside of Hubbard, Ohio, there. And the load shifted and the paint like was spilling basically to the point where it's like a hazmat at this point. And they didn't even want me to call the fire. Department. And the state troopers came up and they said, well, we're, we're glad that you called us because we would have arrested you for this. They were, they were arguing with the towing companies that were there because, it, because it, and they wouldn't even pay them. They didn't even want to pay them. So they'll take your money 
but they don't want to pay, you know, like a bumper or something's wrong with the truck. You know, they have a national tire account. I looked at my settlement. There was $350 taken out. That's supposed to be on their expense, but that's what they'll do to you, you know? So I'm definitely going to take a personal visit out there and, you know, open a prayer that, you know, my stuff is in a box somewhere or they know where it is because this phone call bumble jumbo isn't helping. And you're going to have disgruntled drivers here and something's really not going to go well at this company because somebody's just going to lose it over there. Something's, something's not going to, you know, someone's just really not going to have the patience to get screwed over like that by c- carriers like this. Well, again, I hope and pray that, that, that you're able to come out on top of, of this situation. I, I, I guess this is a learning experience for yourself now. You learned the hard way to, that this company really, really wasn't all that cracked up to be, man. What do you got to say now for drivers that might be interested in controversial company Super Eagle? I, what I have to say is I think they should do, you know, a lot of research. If you want to be an owner-operator, don't go lease to purchase. Get a truck from a dealership. Get your own authority. And you could even get your own, you know, bobtail tractor with your own authority and just pull for carriers. Don't run, call your own shots. You can't make money at a company like this. And I would say don't go because you're leasing a truck that they sell you a dream that you're going to be an owner operator and they go steal from you, rob you blind. And you really got to, you really got to watch what you're doing out here in this industry. And I would tell drivers, don't go. You want to be an independent contractor? You want to make money on the road? You want to own? You want to finance your own truck through a dealership? You want to get your own truck through a dealership? Never get it through a zero to buy, walk away lease. You don't want to do it. It's not beneficial, you know. Even their driver app that that app is made through them. It's not an actual load board, so it'll show a price. But then you have to reach out to your dispatcher. So whatever rate con they're seeing is completely different from what you're seeing. So they'll send you, you know, the load information of what they're paying you. And then they'll still take 20% off the load. So no matter how you look at it, when you look at your settlement, they'll always find something when you make a positive check to take back off of you. I was up late last night because uh, I got the address from uh, Super Eagle Holding because they accidentally sent the address to me and it was supposed to go to the previous driver. Okay. Wait, Super wait, Eagle. Wait, 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 wait. Let's 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 get cat caught up. So this is involving truck number six six zero eight. You you found the truck. One. Oh, zero one. You you found the truck? I found the truck's last previous location. Okay, okay. All right. So okay. with that info so with that information, what you found out about it? Where where was it? It was at the Days Inn in Tannersville, Pennsylvania. Okay. Is that near you or no? That is about twenty minutes from me. Okay. Okay. Pretty cool. So with, and so with that information in hand, I walked up to the desk to ask about the truck. They gave me the driver's name and phone number at the at the hotel at the hotel. OK, wait, wait, wait. Don't get me wrong. I I, I don't think the hotel should be giving out that kind of information. But but. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm assuming. Like I'm, I'm assuming. Life. Right. I'm. I'm assuming you. You explained to them the 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 situation, and you needed to get in contact with the driver that's dr- that's yes, that's driving that the truck. The oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You know, I'm here to. So the hotel didn't yeah. bother to connect to the room and say, "Hey, we got somebody out here that's that's that says something wrong with the truck or whatever, whatever." And he wasn't there. He checked out yesterday. Okay, okay. That was roughly around one thirty in the morning. So the story gets even better. I asked them to tell me the location of the truck when they received it. Now you talking about you now you talking about Super Eagle now, right? Super Eagle. Super Eagle also texted me the location of the truck where it was 
where the driver previously took it from. Okay. And they sent me an address, and I've been to this address before. And that's how I knew so well. Because he didn't, the driver I spoke with on the phone didn't really, he didn't know the exact location. I'm not sure if he's being honest or truthful. But he said Panda Express in Philadelphia, and they sent me an address is 751 Harrison Street in Philadelphia. And I did business with them before with Super Ego. So then I knew exactly where they brought the truck. So he brought the truck. He based, I figured out all the puzzle pieces of how this happened and how it went down. So he brought the truck to this place in Philly so the guys could clean out the truck. Got it cleaned out. They put him in a hotel. And he's on his way. He's on a load going to Indianapolis right now as we speak. You got a hold of the driver. I, I got a hold of the driver. You did get a hold of the driver. You you had a conversation yes. with him, and he told. And the driver told you where where the, the truck, truck was dropped, out. where the truck was being cleaned out at. Yeah, he told me. Okay, so with that information, was you able to get in contact with the people that cleaned out the truck to see if if they have your belongings? I did, and he's lying right to my face, even though I have the proof. Super Ego accidentally sent me the address and where it was last, and I have the proof that it actually was there. And he's telling me that he the truck was never there. I mean, honesty goes a long way with me. Now that I know the truck was there, and they do these these guys, they do recoveries, they do they clean out trucks, they do a, a lot of shit. They they do a lot of shit with trucks because I dealt with them before. They work with Super Ego personally. And the last time I was there, I had a, a load shift. And I was there for a while because they were supposed to restack it. And that's how I knew it. I knew it was the area so well. I just knew it was the same, same people. So I went over to get something to eat because it was taking them quite some time. And I went back. As I got back to my, I, I got back to my truck, the guy there was, selling the product in the back of the trailer to other people he called it was miller light so he was selling the miller light to other people so he was very very shady character you know what i mean okay okay so this is the same company that you dealt with before and for a fact that the truck was I there know for a fact that the truck was yeah. there and the truck was being cleaned out truck was now being that, cleaned out now that the truck is cleaned out the new driver is driving the truck now. He's assigned to that truck to take a load over to Indianapolis or to pick up a load in Indianapolis. Correct. So did you? Yeah. So with the conversation with you and that driver, did he again? Did you get any type of inkling that 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 he had your stuff or or he you you felt you me. you felt that he was. You felt he was truthful that they cleaned out the truck and they kept your stuff. It could be both ways. He could be protecting himself. He could be telling the truth. I'm in limbo because it's like he said he didn't pick up the truck at the hospital where I was at. He picked it up in Philadelphia. So they must have called the recovery team in Philadelphia to pick up the truck. Brought it down there, cleaned it out. As he's in the process of going to pick up his, you know, truck from Super Ego, they must have gave him a little jumble story. Super Ego told me they were going to mail me my stuff. My stuff was going to be, you know, at the Chicago yard. No, it was cleaned out in Philadelphia and assigned a new driver. And now that driver's making money with the truck that I previously had. And they threw away my dad's ashes and Navy dog tags. And still refused to answer any of my phone calls. Wow. I had to do some really deep investigating to find that truck, to actually find information to get, you know, the information on the truck. So let me ask you this. Since you're you're since you're MPA, I'm not sure how far are you away from that place, but did you go down there? What were you able to go down to that place that cleaned out the truck to at least make sure that they didn't have Philly. your stuff. They're in Philly, and I tried to call. I I tried to call him last night because I got the actual proof last night, and he's telling me the truck was never there. 
and I hate being lied to, even though when I know when I know the truth, like be honest with me. Your one worker claims he was a veteran. You would just and he knew my name, like he knows my name personally. And I actually thought we were pretty good friends. You know what I mean? But he cleaned out the truck and he knows like there was my medical card was in there for my CDL. It was in the drawer. My medical card was in there. I had medication in there. I have my dad's Navy tag in there. That truck, when I FaceTimed that guy last night, that truck was cleaned and dry. He's claiming the truck is still dirty, but he's sleeping in hotels. It's Man. something else. How I, I, I've never dealt with something like this before. Like, I've had that truck cleaned out before, like when I worked at, worked at Western Express. But they actually had the audacity to at least put the... <laughs> put my stuff in a box and tape it up. You know what I mean? Man, this, this. These guys over here at Super Ego clean out your shit, put another driver in it, and make money. That truck got, got, got to make money. But I don't think it's legal or ethical to dispose of someone's property. Let me tell you. I want to bring it back to the top for a second. You, you... You you had the truck for for quite a while. You made the payments. It was of course Super Eagle going to always say there's two sides to every story. A Super Eagle will probably come out and say, "Well, here's the reason why the truck was was recovered." Do you have any idea of why they will come and recover the truck from you? Like what? I have no idea. I covered my ass. I told them I was going to the hospital. I'm going to be off for a few days. And as soon as I'm done, you know, with the birth of my newborn daughter, I'll be ready for a load. As soon as she's able, like my wife is able to be released from the hospital with C-section because it's a pretty big surgery. You know what I mean? So I didn't want to leave her hanging for a load. You know what I mean? Like once the load, once I was, you know, I got cleared from the hospital. I said, yeah, I'm, I'm ready for a load. By that time, they took the truck. They didn't really give me an actual reason. Because after that, I tried to get reasons. I had the police involved. I called the company, as you've seen, six, probably about over 100 times to try to get answers. In order for me to get answers, I had to basically, they actually, they accidentally gave me the driver's name. So I basically posed as him to see the location of the truck to get information on my my belongings so nothing no inkling between you and your fleet manager that anything was wrong or your fleet manager didn't call anymore your fleet manager didn't give you a heads up on something was wrong you You didn't didn't, you 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 didn't give them no inkling of i quit i didn't even tell them i was quitting i didn't give him no like you know how you just, you know, you, you might give a little, like a little hint that you're quitting or anything else. I didn't give them any hint. I told them I'd be ready for the load. Like they're pretty, they, they're usually pretty lenient with that stuff. That's why this, this caught me off guard. You know what I mean? I was like, wow, you, you, you guys are dirty. Like you should see the, the, the bills of lading in the truck, how many loads I ran. They made a decent amount of money off of me. As they do with everybody else, they sell you the dream. They, and I told the guy, I said, "Hey, I said, let me guess. They offered you a thousand bucks to go get the truck. Yes, they did. They're going to give me five hundred one day, then five hundred the next. Yeah, and you're going to be negative your first check." I said, "Wow, this this sounds like an intriguing story that I had with a young lady a couple of years ago. That's that was a popular story right there, where she came home." I can remember I'm just I'm paraphrasing here she came home dropped her truck she was on home time she went back to get back in the truck at the home time and they came and took it from the from the truck stop so so yeah man I I I I this is this this is a mate this is amazing to me like that this company will pull that truck from you and don't give you a reason why and you right didn't the give them a reason why you didn't give them a reason to take the truck you was you you was 
You was with family. It was an emergency. This is your first daughter. It's crazy in a sense that they will do that to you while you're while you having your firstborn child take the truck from Literally. you. Literally. And like, they know that after that you're gonna need you you you're gonna need to get back in that truck to make money for your family, especially after the birth of, of course, your child. I was ready to I was literally ready to roll. As soon as I was cleared from the hospital, I said I send me the, the load, we'll be cleared from the hospital Monday, Monday morning. I have to wait for the documents and the paperwork. So it was basically Friday into Monday, basically. Over the weekend, the, my wife's surgery was on a Friday, and it takes a little bit for them to, you know, clear to check the baby, all this other stuff to make sure everything's good. And I was ready to go by Monday, and I'm calling my fleet manager left and right. I even I even text him on Friday and update him as well. He's out the loop. I haven't heard of. He won't even answer my calls no matter what. So I just don't. I never. I mean, you own a trucking company. Your truck's sitting for a while. I understand you have to make money with that truck. I'm look, trying to look at it as a business perspective, but there's good business and then there's bad business. You know what I mean? The driver's in the truck, no matter what circumstance, he's on the road with the truck. He's trying to work, trying to make money. Put his stuff in a location where he's able to get his property from that truck. Then you put another driver in it, clean it out, and then bring it back, and then you know, then start driving the truck. Put the driver's stuff. Don't throw it away. You know what I mean? Like, you never know what people are capable of. Like, you might run into somebody that was, that, you know, you know, will do something wrong to companies that do them dirty like that. You can't do everybody dirty and expect a fair shake. You know what I mean? There's guys, I'm on the, I'm on the Facebook group right now on Super Ego. There's complaints every single day. Every single day, they have to do right by the drivers in order to run a successful company. Tim, you said earlier that you reached out to the news. This needs to be heard. Like This needs to be heard. That's exactly why I did what I did. And then I also looked up your podcast. And I, I was watching you for a couple of years, and I liked your video. So I was like, you know what? Now that social media is so big, you know, I should be able to get heard somehow. It, it, they they portray themselves and they feed the drivers all these lies about booking your own loads and doing all this shit. I have the app on my phone. You can't book your own loads. You can't call the broker personally and be like, hey, I want this rate for my truck. Your best bet, if you wanted to work for Super Ego, is to apply for your own authority and get a percentage, get an actual percentage. So they can't skim off the top. That's what you do. You run under your own authority under the truck you're leasing. Who who was you able to get in contact with, and what news outlet that you tried to that that you tried to get with? I called the biggest outlet in Chicago, ABC Seven, and I believe they reached out to somebody there. His name is. Well, he had to leave a message. They wouldn't even answer his call. His name is Jason Knowles, an investigator for AB7 News. Like this, this, this was wrong to do. This Considering very- that I'm that that I'm that this even came in my mind about getting getting the news out there to get involved with with you guys and y'all situations with controversial company Super Eagle. I, I would imagine that some of the stories, of course, some of the stories I got is still is still crazy, but. The stories and the, the stories that you guys have and y'all can present it to WGN and Channel 7 and the like, I, I think if they get involved, that will probably shed much more light on the company. Huh. So or- I, if I were you up under yours, especially your circumstance, if I were you, I, I'll, yeah, I'll, keep, I'll keep pushing WGN, CNN, CNN Chicago, 8 Chicago, 12 Chicago. I, I, I would uh, I would email, uh, I would call. This this needs to get I'm out, gonna keep, man. I'm going to keep pushing. And, uh, this needs to get my out. My dad because was very special to me. And he had a keychain. It was, it was It's a special keychain. And uh, every time, you know... He walks around, you'd hear that keychain, and that when he when he walked around, like he'll grab his keys and he'll walk around with that keychain. It kind of chucks up a little bit, but that keychain was in my 
was in that truck. That it, it's a big golden it's a big golden hook keychain. And the driver said he was a veteran. You were a devil dog, okay? You were a Marine. Why didn't you look to see what they were taking from the truck while you were there? Uh, he he didn't care. He's at the hotel, I so he ain't going to be honest. I, he didn't I, care. I, only I thing he cared. Story. Only thing he cared about was the was the dropping the truck off, get it cleaned out, get in the truck, and start making some money. And start making some money. That's the thing. That's all he cared about. Because he said he was bullshitting around with the guy in Philly. He went to go eat. I said, yes, they take the jolly old time. I was down there for hours while that asshole was down there selling that fucking load on there. And one of his workers were was actually drinking the beer in the back of the truck. If I were you, like I said, I, I would keep pushing this. I, I, I would I would see th this is a civil suit. So I, I, I would yeah, see if I can get uh, a lawyer involved as well because this is a civil suit man yeah i'm definitely looking into it because there this is this is and not one person i spoke with on the phone would actually hold a conversation they were every time i called they go up oh, and then let me transfer you to my colleague number don't exist then they do it then i call again they know who it is i could feel i could feel like a smile behind the phone so it's like it's like pure evil. Like you know what I mean? Like they, they they're making money. Like they'll have they have people in a different country that they bring over on the visa to work a little bit, and then they're they're working from a different country and in Chicago. So it's like it. Let's let's fuck America even harder. You know what I mean? Like I, I don't. Like, I'm not against you know. Making the American dream, but let, let's make fucking Americans actually have the American dream. <laughs> you know what I mean? I feel you. Well, Tim, man, thanks for for the update, man. I I, I appreciate it. Continue to continue to fill me in. I, I will continue to get the word out for you, and hopefully, hopefully, we will have a, a satisfied ending to this, whether it's monetary or you you're able to get your your stuff back. So, yeah, and uh, hopefully it's not in the landfill in Philadelphia somewhere, you know? I feel it's it. It's only uh, unreal. I couldn't believe it. It's not fair. It's ridiculous, and it's, it's traumatizing for you for you on a whole bunch of levels, man. It really is. And for In my mind, I kind of shut off, like, a part of me about it because I'm basically, like, helpless over it. There's nothing really I could do. And I can't react in a manner where I end up going to jail. You know what I mean? Like, so I have to keep I'm doing it the legal, most legal way I could possibly, you know, do. And I have a clean out company where I do like junk removal and stuff. And I'm doing that now. I make more money doing that than I am even driving for them. And I drove for them for months. And they sell the drivers the American dream. Like you can book your own load, you can drive around, you can do all the shit you need to do. But then you got the, the drivers that are naive when they make a positive check and they think they're making money. You're getting robbed. You might see one or two good checks, but that's about it, you know? You might see a couple positive checks, but you'll see what they, they'll they take out of your settlement. Like, I, they took out $350 for an ELD payment from months ago. Like, they'll add little different things. Like, you're only supposed to have your truck payment, your your bobtail insurance, but they'll, they'll, they're professional at skimming off the, the top of the load and getting the money back from what from other drivers. They're professional at talking their way on them. Go ahead. Uh, in too deep like Omar. Make me want to track you down and hit the track hawk with the crowbar. I knew we wouldn't go far, like we ran out of ethanol. Now your nosy ass mama want to get involved. When I met you, you was on the couch with the plastic. She need an Emmy. Bitch so dramatic. Now your baggage got me on edge like jagged. Fucking up my homes, look Patrick. You swift to jump shift like a chief. Been crying on my line like Therese. But it ain't all you, it's me. Blaming on the things I went through.